Good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, for all our friends around the world. My name is Kevin Welding. I am the Associate Director of the Institute for Global Tobacco Control at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Thanks for joining us for our latest talk in the Innovations in Tobacco Control Lecture Series. It is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Fernanda Alonzo. Fernanda is a public health and drug policy consultant. Recently working with the Yale Center for the Study of Globalization, the Pan American Health Organization, among others. Just a few months ago, she completed a PhD in the Department of Health Behavior and Society at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. This complements an already impressive academic career with a law degree from the Mexico Autonomous Institute of Technology and a master's in global health law from the Georgetown University Law Center. Her research has focused on the regulation of risk factors for non-communicable diseases and drug policies. Her dissertation looked at the regulatory frameworks and structural stigma related to medications for op opioid use. Uh, her recent publications have addressed drug policy in Mexico, cannabis user behavior, corporate autonomy in the tobacco, alcohol, and sugary sweetened beverage industries, and most recently, a paper I had the pleasure of working on with her, and what she will talk about today, policies related to health warning label rotation in the PAHO, or uh, American region of uh, the world. If you'd like to ask questions along the way, use the Q&A box you can see at the bottom of your window. Um, and for now, I will hand it over to you, Fernanda. Welcome. Thanks so much, Kevin. And so today I'll be talking about policies related to health warning label rotation in the PAHO region. And first off, I just want to thank uh, Kevin, who I had the honor of working on this paper with, as well as Joanna Cohen, who's the other co-author in this paper. So before going into rotation, I think it's important to just briefly discuss health warning labels and why they're important. So large picture-based health warning labels on tobacco packages are or should be an essential component of any national strategy to reduce tobacco use. With PACs, tobacco companies depend on their package design to build brand recognition and promote sales. These packagings establish something that's completely opposite to the realities and dangers associated with tobacco product use. So control over this tobacco packaging is critical to tobacco control efforts. Tobacco packs can effectively broadcast messages about the harmful impact of tobacco use, and research shows that they're effective in increasing knowledge about risks associated with smoking and can influence future decisions. They can motivate smokers to quit, discourage non-smokers from starting, and keep ex-smokers from starting again. But not all health warning labels can do this equally. So what do health warning labels need to incorporate? What makes them most effective at communicating health risks of tobacco? So overall, research shows that it's important for warnings to be large, for them to contain both pictures and text, and to be in color. Evidence also shows, and this is going to be the focus of this presentation, that labels must be rotated periodically to remain effective. So why is rotation necessary? So frequent rotation of label pictures, content, and even layout can prevent message fatigue or apathy. Research shows that when people are exposed to the same message over long periods of time, eventually it decreases its effectiveness and it can cause viewers to feel apathetic towards the message itself. This effect of overexposure is called wear out or message fatigue. And there's two main types of wear out effects. The first is kind of the general wear out effect, which is that people get used to the presence of warnings. So this is just all warnings on packs or specific effects, people getting used to the actual content of the warnings. To minimize these wear out effects, rotation of warnings and changes in the layout and design are vital in being able to maintain this effectiveness. Apart from combating this wear out effect, rotation also allows for more targeted messaging for subgroups within a population. And it can also target specific health issues that can be more prevalent at a moment in time or in a specific population. 
For example, we're now seeing several PACs in Latin America where they've brought in COVID to the PACs, so showing that risks of COVID may increase for smokers. So this is something that can also be done with PAC rotation to be kind of with the times. Now, even though we know about the dangers of wear out or message fatigue, there is still limited evidence about the best time frame for rotating labels. It's hard to do studies in this area because of the time it would require just methodological aspects. However, the few studies that have been conducted so far show that labels decline in effectiveness over time. For example, one study found evidence of significant warning wear out in Canada and the US over a nine year period. Another study from 10 European countries found that periodically introducing new warnings help maintain warning effectiveness over time. So because of this research, experts recommend rotation cycles of these warnings at least one or two years and no more than every four years. Now, before we go further into the, the research, I just wanted to introduce some terms that appear in international instruments and national legislation to avoid any type of confusion. So this is a list of terms that are used often and may seem similar but mean different things. So broadly, a health warning label is a warning comprised of text and a corresponding color pictogram. A pair is two distinct warnings that go together on one pack or product as part of the overall label. So for example, you can have a picture like in Uruguay on the front of the pack and one on the back of the pack. And then rounds or iterations. So this is a group of labels that are put into rotation for a specific period of time where there's a specific number of sets. So usually this round or iteration lasts until a new regulation is passed. So a set is the group of labels that will be in place at the same time. So in terms of what international guidelines say about rotation, the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control has guidelines for the implementation of Article 11 of the FCTC that establish packaging and label requirements for tobacco products. They don't necessarily offer in-depth details, but they do establish that warnings on tobacco products should rotate, and that, as can be seen in, in this box, that the rotation can be implemented by having multiple health warnings and messages appearing concurrently or by setting a date after which the health warning and message content will change. So the guidelines establish a broad period of rounds of 12 to 36 months. This is in line with the literature that recommends rotation cycles at least every 12 to 24 months and no more than four years. The guidelines don't establish how many warnings are ideal per set, but the evidence shows that implementing a set should have between eight and 10 warnings that appear concurrently. So this would be that any given time in a country, there would be anywhere between eight and 12 warnings, different warnings in tobacco products. This would be the, the ideal. Additionally, the guidelines set that national legislation should include these different elements. It should, even though it doesn't recommend how many, it does say that national legislation should specify the number of labels to appear concurrently. They should also appear, each number should appear on an equal number of retail packages. That is to say, if you had 100 packs being sold and five warnings, 20 packs should have a different picture. Additionally, it says that you should establish two or more sets of labels to alternate after a specific period. So in theory, this would mean that when you pass a law, you set up at least two sets of X amount of labels. So you would have a set of eight and then a second set of eight and those keep rotating over and over. It also says that national legislation should establish that during transition periods between sets, a phase-in period for rotation. So during these phase-in periods or transition periods, both sets may be used. Apart from the FCTC, 
in this region, we can also look at an additional standard. So we have Caribbean countries that can use the CARICOM regional standard for the labeling of tobacco products. This provides slightly more specific requirements than the guidelines for the FCTC. This document sets out that warnings should be divided into two distinct sets, each made up of eight different health warning labels. Like the WHO FCTC guidelines, the document also mentions that these labels should be evenly distributed to appear on an equal number of retail packages. Additionally, it sets out that no set shall be in the market for more than 16 months, and that within those 16 months, transition periods shall be determined by national legislation. So as we can see here in this picture, the CARICOM regional standard provides an example schedule for rotation. So it sets out that on an even year, you get one set that you then introduce the other set to phase out, and in odd years, it's the other set with the phase out times. So this means that you'd get eight months per year of just one set with four months where you get both sets that are transitioning. Now, before we move on to analyzing rotation in the region of, Amer of the Americas, we can look at some international examples to see the wide range of options that are available in terms of rotation. As can be seen in this table, globally, there's much variety, and this is both in the number of warnings per set as well as the rotation periods. Now, as of 2018, which is the, the last time that there was a, a full study done worldwide, there's 118 countries or jurisdictions that had finalized requirements for warnings and rotation. There's countries with more than one set of health warning labels that have rotation periods in place. For example, in this list, we can see Australia, the EU, or New Zealand. So during each rotation period, only one set of labels is present, except during transition times where both sets can be in circulation. So for example, New Zealand has a total of 14 health warning labels that are divided into two sets of seven. The first set is present for the first 12 months and the second set is present for the second 12 months. What isn't always clear from the laws and regulations is whether these sets are indefinitely rotated or if they only rotate once before two new sets are introduced. Some countries have sets in circulation only once before they need to pass a law resolution for a new iteration of warnings. And then in some country examples, it's unclear how rotation periods work when only one set is mentioned in the law. For example, in the case of Ukraine, it sets out one set of 10 warnings in a five-year rotation period. It's unclear whether those five years, the 10 warnings are to appear consecutively or concurrently, if all of them are appearing at once and after the five year, you'll get 10 new ones. So sometimes it's unclear from the laws what is going to happen. So while research shows the need to have warnings with pictograms and rotation, there is little information about how the components set out in international instruments or research are actually being included in national legislation in the region of the Americas or how these legal measures are being implemented on the ground. Several international reports, such as the WHO report on global tobacco epidemic, only sets out whether or not countries have rotation requirements in their laws. For example, this WHO report simply has the criterion warnings are rotated and says the number of countries that comply. Another PAHO report sets out characteristics of health warnings on cigarette packs and just has a checkbox for the categories, are they rotating? However, it doesn't go into more detail or provide specific elements of these laws. So with this in mind and to fill in some of the gaps in knowledge, the research wanted to answer to what extent are countries in the region of the Americas meeting the requirements for rotation of cigarette pack health warning labels as laid out by the FCTC guidelines. In the research that was undertaken, we described the extent to which countries in this region are meeting the requirements for rotation as laid out not only by the guidelines, but also in the regional standards, as well as looking at key regulation challenges re related to this rotation. 
part of the importance and the innovative nature of this research is that we're going beyond just a simple analysis of countries' tobacco control laws and analyzing two main things. So we're looking at each detailed component of rotation that's required by the guidelines. So this means looking at number of sets, rotation time, transition rules and schedules, authorities in charge of warnings and penalties and fines. And we're also looking to find and analyze follow-up regulation or ministerial resolutions to establish if new iterations and rounds of health warning labels are being required in the countries. So to do to see how we did this, we'll look briefly at the methods. For this analysis, we examined the laws, regulations, and ministerial resolutions for 24 countries and territories in the region of the Americas. Initially, we included the countries in the WHO report on the global tobacco epidemic, which showed the requirement for pictograms and rotation periods. With this report, we were left with an initial 23 countries. From those 23 countries, we eliminated Nicaragua, because they'd adopted regulation in 2010, but it hasn't been regulated or implemented since then, according to WHO. And we also eliminated Paraguay, where no official information was available online. Apart from these countries, we added Antigua and Barbados, Bermuda and Turks and Caicos, which were missing from the WHO report, but we could find requirements for pictograms and rotations publicly available online. So after this initial search, we were left with this list of 24 countries. So from February to November of 2021, we identified all the relevant laws and regulations. This was done both through official government websites, as well as publicly available databases, such as the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids Tobacco Control Laws database. We then read the laws, regulations, and resolutions, looking for all the components of the FCTC guidelines for implementation of Article 11. So this left us with a database where we were able to input the following elements. The number of warnings and sets in rotation at a time, rotation period and iteration round periods, transition schedules, notices to manufacturers and distributors, authorities in charge of warnings, penalties and fines, and other relevant elements. Finally, all these categories were analyzed to determine if the information available fulfilled the requirements set out in the FCTC and in order to identify similarities and differences across countries. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the findings. The first element that was analyzed is the number of warnings in rotation at a time. Now, before delving into this element, it is important to mention, and I've done so a little bit already, but what makes the rotation element unique to other elements in tobacco control law? So for other elements, they're normally just simply passed in the general tobacco control law and then are implemented. Now, this doesn't mean this doesn't come with its own challenges, but legally the requirement's been established. Now the problem with rotation is that in many of these countries, there's a requirement to pass future iterations through another legal instrument. Normally this is done through a ministerial resolution. This means that each time a new resolution is passed with new rounds and iterations, there may be differences in what health warning labels look like, how many are passed and for how long. We'll see a few examples in a few slides. So overall, there's a wide variety in the number of warnings required in rotation at a time. This ranges from four, for example, in Guyana and Turks and Caicos, all the way to 16 in Canada. Of the countries analyzed, there's also a few that have less clarity on the number. For example, in Honduras, none of the laws and regulations clarify how many warnings must be in place, and in Antigua and Barbuda, it only sets a minimum of six without establishing how many necessarily need to be put in place. Other countries have established rotation schedules, define the number of sets, and set out specific health warning labels with the passing of their initial rotation laws. This is especially the case in some Caribbean countries, such as Barbados, Jamaica, and St. Lucia, who follow the CARICOM regional standards. 
they, when they pass their initial law, have 16 pictograms dividing into two rotating sets. These countries continue to alternate between the two sets rather than developing new warnings every time the rotation period ends. Other countries also have pairs of pictograms. So as was mentioned before, a pair is different than warnings. These are ones that go together in one pack or carton or product as part of the overall health warning label. So Chile has four pairs and Uruguay has eight images divided into four pairs as well. There's also a wide range of rotation times. This ranges from five months in the case of Brazil to 24 months in countries like Antigua and Barbuda and El Salvador. Of the 24 countries we looked at, 18, so 75%, are within that 12 to 36 month period that's set out by the FCTC guidelines. The remaining six countries are below the 12 months, so that's the case with Brazil with the five months, or don't specify rotation times. This is the case in Bolivia, Canada, and Venezuela, for example. Bolivian law doesn't state a rotation period, but does state that future regulations must specify one. So with these laws, a lot of the time, it's kicking the can forward and saying, we're not necessarily going to determine all these elements, but future regulations should. However, in this case, we couldn't find any available regulations that contain this information. This shows the problem of needing something that can be changed with new resolutions or legal instruments. So even though these periods are established, in some instances, rotation periods may be longer if resolutions with new warnings aren't passed. Now, in many of these countries, the law sets out that resolutions establishing the health warning labels must be passed by competent authorities every time new warnings are required. While the law state the periods in which this should happen, these new provisions aren't always introduced in time or sometimes at all. Other countries foresaw that delays were possible and included provisions so that health warning labels could be extended. For example, Suriname says that if provisions aren't passed in time, health warning labels that are currently in place can be extended for another 18 months. Now, given the available data, it's unclear how many rounds of warnings most countries have passed or implemented. There are some clear examples, such as Mexico, where we can see online that there's been 11 rounds, or Ecuador, where there's been nine rounds. In these two cases, all these new regulations are available online. However, for the majority of countries, we couldn't find updated regulations. For example, the last resolution we could find for Venezuela was published in November 2013. In cases like this, it's unclear whether the same warnings have been in place since 2013 or if they have changed and the information is simply not publicly available. So Mexico is an interesting case study to examine both of the previous elements. Mexico's numbers vary drastically depending on the iteration or round of health warning labels. So ministerial resolutions that have established the number of warnings and their length have created 11 iterations from December 20, 2009 to November 2021. Now, each iteration around has gone anywhere from 2 to 11 warnings. The original law states that there must be between 4 to 11 pictograms and designates the time that they're in rotation depending on how many warnings. So the original tobacco control law says that there should be 6 months for a set of 2 warnings, 12 months for a set of 4 warnings, and 30 months for smokeless products. However, in the 10 rotation periods over the last 12 years, three lasted six months, four lasted 12 months, one lasted 12, 20 months, and one even lasted 30 months. These times have not necessarily been consistent with the norm number of warnings, nor do they seem to follow any specific pattern. For example, you have one that lasted six months and had two warnings, and then another one also lasted six months but had four warnings. So there's not necessarily any coherent pattern in this. 
And finally, like in September 2021, there was a new agreement on health warnings passed by the health ministry. This resolution states that it's valid for 15 months, again, another random period of time, and has eight images and health warnings. Now, the first four pictograms are part of the previous round, so they're only valid for three months, and their use ends in February 22. The fourth health warning pictograms and messages, which are seen on this slide, are the new ones, and these will be valid for 12 months from March 2022 to February 2023. So it's, it's a little hard to keep up with what warnings should actually be in place at any given time. And then something that is interested in this, interesting in this resolution is that it sets out the themes for the warnings. So in this case, it says the warnings are based on lung cancer, breast cancer, COVID-19, and tuberculosis. So the selection of these topics was made based on the available scientific evidence regarding with harm associated with smoking, but it also takes into account current events. So in this case, the risk that smokers face in case of falling ill with COVID-19. Apart from rotation periods and number of warnings, there's also variability in the region regarding the period tobacco companies. And this includes companies that produce, manufacture, or import tobacco products and other tobacco related entities. So this includes retailers who sell tobacco products and external companies which make the packaging. It sets out how these entities have to take products with old health warning labels out of rotation. Several countries don't specify whether packs with old health warning labels can stay on the shelf at retailers when no new ones come into rotation. Other countries do establish a set number of days that these can remain in circulation. So this is anywhere from 30 to 90 days or all the way up to six months in Antigua and Barbuda. Countries using the CARICOM regional standard have those very clear transition periods in their schedules like can be seen in the health warning rotations in Barbados in the picture in this slide, which is very close to the CARICOM regional standard. So in these instances, as we mentioned, as I mentioned before, they establish four months where one set is introduced and the other is phased out. There's also countries like El Salvador or Chile, where manufacturers can request authorization to keep products with old health warning labels in rotation for a set period. For example, in Chile, if there are products in warehouses with previous health warning labels, when the new ones come into force, they can request authorization from the health authority to continue their distribution. This exception can only be used for an amount of product equivalent to the production distributed during the previous month, and it can also be done only for a set amount of time. Now, the issue is that if people aren't properly transitioning, and you do have two sets that keep rotating over and over, you may risk that you'll pretty much have the same labels in rotation well, forever, which can lead to the wear out that was mentioned initially. Now, in terms of the notices to manufacturers and distributors, most laws establish where the new health warning labels will be published how manufacturers or distributors will be informed, and what processes they must follow. In most cases, the new health warning labels are published through official government channels, such as official gazettes. And the new resolutions are published for the general public and interested parties to see in these daily publications. Now, because these are specific guidelines that tobacco companies or distributors must follow, there are several countries that mention that electronic annexes have to accompany the Gazette postings. So tobacco companies have to use the health warning labels directly from the electronic files approved by the relevant authorities to ensure that they're meeting the exact criteria. So that can be seen in the picture on this slide, which shows the type of text, the size, the proportions and the exact picture that has to be used. Some countries, such as Honduras and Colombia, go even further to ensure that health warning labels meet the criteria and maintain the same quality 
by laying out detailed timelines for obtaining government approval of proofs for health warning labels. So they have to send the proofs out to the government authorities, get authorization, and then they can go ahead and print the, the packs. Some laws also establish how long the government has to inform manufacturers of new health warning labels before they go into effect. Now there's different ways in which penalties and fines are presented in countries' legislation. There's different specificity. So very few countries set out penalties and fines that are specific to rotation. More, more often you'll get penalties and fines defined specific to packaging and labeling. And in other cases, you'll just have the broad general of penalties and fines for tobacco control law violations. So for example, Barbados legislation sets out that individuals who manufacture, distribute, or sell a carton or package which fails to comply with labeling requirements. So labeling requirements is set out broadly. This does include rotation are liable to a fine of $5,000 and are imprisonment for a term of 12 months. In other instances, there are sections written in the packaging and health warning regulations which set out specific fines around rotation. This is less common. For example, in T1 Barbados Tobacco Control Act states that at the end of the six months rotation period, in addition to any penalty to which the responsible person may be subject, any packaging and labeling with the warnings from the previous prior rotation period, along with the contents of the package, shall be subject to confiscation and destruction. Now, regardless of where the penalties and fines are set out in laws and regulation, it's not always clear who inspects and enforces possible violations. So some of the laws name which office or authority oversees the general control and enforcement. For example, in Chile, it's the regional ministerial health secretariat and municipal inspectors, but they don't describe more specific mechanisms. A few laws do go a step further and they set out general action plans. For example, Colombia's laws state that police authorities will carry out random inspection, surveillance, and control procedures at the point of sale to guarantee compliance. In Peru, the law states that municipalities, the Ministry of Health, and the Permanent National Commission on the Anti-Tobacco Fight shall make the necessary inspections to ensure compliance within the sphere of their respective competencies. However, more detailed plans of actions are also unavailable online. Now, out of the 24 countries analyzed, we couldn't find any information on the sanctioning body or the established penalties and fines for 13 countries. So slightly over 50% don't have this information available. For the countries that do establish sanctions in their laws, there's a wide range of penalties and fines. This includes monetary penalties, imprisonment, confiscation and destruction of products, possible cancellation of sales, and temporary or permanent closure, suspension, or revocation of licenses. Finally, there's two additional elements that we looked at. First is the authority in charge of health warning labels. In over 70% of the countries analyzed, the leading authority in charge of providing the warnings and introducing the necessary resolutions is the health authority or the Ministry of Health. So in this case, it's particularly important to see who the authority is since they will be in charge of making sure that the warnings are updated throughout time. Some laws provide specific detail about which areas within the Ministry of Health oversee packaging and label, labeling, such as the National Health Surveillance Agency in Brazil. A few countries have other health-related offices, such as the Institute for the Prevention of Alcoholism, Drug Addiction, and Drug Dependency in Honduras, or the Federal Commission for Protection Against Health Risks in Mexico. Then there's a few countries that have chosen authorities outside the health space for the, this role. So this includes Barbados National Standard Institution or the Ministry of Social Welfare in Colombia. Another element that was also present in almost 60% of the countries and that is in line with the FCTC guidelines is requiring that each of the health warning labels in each set prescribed for the rotation pe period appear on an equal number of retail packages for each brand. 
So what do these different elements show us? As we can see from these elements, the majority of the countries analyzed here are considered by PAHO WHO to have the highest level of implementation for Article 11. So this is what is seen in the different WHO and PAHO reports. They are, according to these reports, complying with this implementation. Now, our analysis shows that the majority of these countries have included most of the elements required by the FCTC guidelines in the national legislation. For example, as we saw, 75% of countries have rotation periods within the recommended 12 to 36 months, and about half also have sets with eight to 12 individual warnings, complying with regional guidelines and toolkits. However, our analysis shows that even when these 24 countries do have health warning labels with both pictograms and rotations, important challenges remain. So through this research, we identified two primary challenges. The first is unique to rotation, and the second is found in tobacco control implementation more broadly. So in terms of the first challenge, the need to continually update health warning labels is a key and unique element that's not found in other tobacco control measures. As we saw in the initial slides with the literature, one of the essential elements of warnings is that they have to be revised or updated in order to maintain their effectiveness over time and avoid the so-called message fatigue. This means that passing an initial tobacco control law that mentions rotation isn't necessarily sufficient because for each new set or new iterations or rounds of health warning labels, a new legal measure, this is again, typically a ministerial resolution, must be passed and introduced. This also has to be done in perpetuity. So what we did observe is that even though all of these 24 countries passed an initial control, tobacco control law establishing the broad guidelines for rotation, few have passed the required subsequent measures. So this legislative review shows that many countries analyzed haven't passed the new measure since the first set of warnings, or at least none that could be found online. In some instances, this means that countries have had the same warnings for almost 10 years. And then in other cases, such as Panama or Mexico, as we saw, new rounds have appeared, but they haven't been consistent in length or haven't followed the letter of the law. For example, as was shown, before, on one occasion, it took the Mexican government almost three years to pass a new resolution, when according to the law, this should be done every six to 12 months. Now, the second challenge refers to implementation more broadly. The legal measures around health warning labels and their ro rotation meet similar challenges faced by other tobacco control measures, where implementation is only as good as its enforcement. For example, a weakness found by this analysis relates to the penalties and fines. Fines that are set out in the country's general health laws or even in the general tobacco control laws don't provide enough specificity for implementation. Most of these laws don't indicate who's going to be in charge of the inspection, how often inspections will occur, or who will enforce any infractions. In the specific case of health warning labels and rotation, Inspection and enforcement is crucial in ensuring that cigarette packs are being taken out of rotation at the required times and that old packs are no longer in circulation. Now, it's important to mention that there are several limitations to this analysis. First, there is information missing from the study, as not all country laws and regulations are available online. So in some instances, like in the case of Venezuela and only finding their 2013 law, it's unclear whether we were able to find regulations or if they don't exist. Additionally, the scope of this study doesn't allow us to determine whether all the elements in these countries' laws are actually being implemented on the ground. So future research should consider establishing in-country monitoring to observe whether rotations occurring, whether the number of images set out in the law is available at retailers, whether transition times are being respected and old packs are no longer being sold, and whether warnings do actually appear on an equal number of packs. It would also be really important to see if any penalties have been given or if there are individuals responsible for enforcing the laws. 
So like with all tobacco control, policies are only as good as their implementation. So even if the policy is based on solid theoretical footing and a strong body of evidence, it may not have produced the desire and improved outcomes. So successful realization is always contingent on the willingness and the ability of the designated agencies to implement it. As was mentioned in the previous slides, the legal measures around health warning labels and their rotation meet similar challenges faced by other tobacco control measures when it comes to implementation. And if it's not being implemented properly, then it won't have its expected impact. This research shows that having a baseline understanding of what is in the laws is a crucial first step in knowing the legal landscape around health warning rotation in the region of the Americas. There's already evidence from these laws and regulations that show initial challenges that policymakers must tackle for the effects of label rotation to succeed. The analysis shows that for the most part, most of the countries have included the elements required by the FCTC guidelines, but important challenges do remain. So in terms of some recommendations, it's important that countries that do not currently comply with the FCTC guidelines can modify their laws and regulations primarily to ensure that rotation periods are within the 12 to 36 month period and that the sets have between eight and 12 health warning labels. Additionally, to ensure that the health warning labels are updated, mechanisms should be put in place to ensure that regulations can be passed in a timely manner. Or you can simply establish a rotation period where you may not need to pass new measures or not as often if you keep rotating them throughout the years. Laws and regulations should also be clear about penalties and fines, inspection agencies, and provide guidelines for enforcement. Finally, for any future research, it's crucial to make information public and have transparency about what PACs should be in place at any given time. So thank you all so much for, for taking the time to join today. As I had mentioned previously, I wanna thank Joanna Cohen and Kevin Welding who were co-authors on this paper. I'd also like to thank the tobacco control team at the Pan American Health Organization for feedback throughout the process and for supplying some copies of the legislation that wasn't available online. And finally, the Bloomberg Philanthropies Bloomberg Initiative to Reduce Tobacco Use, who supported with funding for this work. All right, so I will leave this to Kevin to get us started with the Q&A. First. Thank you for the, the presentation. That was uh, fantastic. Um, it does shed a light on a very important sort of part of tobacco control um, that nothing, like sort of everything just starts after a policy has been passed. There's a lot of to do, <laughs> to do after that. Um, I often try to steal the first question for myself. <clears throat> and I should tell everybody, I, I encourage you guys to use the Q&A. Um, we have a few questions here. Um, and the first question that we got during your talk was actually something that I had jotted down myself uh, related. Um, so we have a question from Ghana about, you know, in 2017, they have a health warning label uh, law in place or introduced, um, and they haven't been rotated yet. So sort of like, what can you do? I mean, I think my, my question was a little more broadly, sort of who holds the government accountable for rotating these health warning labels in accordance to the, the initial law. I know, at least in the U.S., sometimes, you know, the civil society can sue the government to sort of try to, to invoke some action. But yeah, I, I will say nothing I'm going to say is legal advice to anyone. I assume, I don't want to speak for you, Fernanda, but I, I assume it's the same. But um, yeah, what could somebody do if they're not actually um, following the, the law? I mean, I think, for example, in, in the case of, of, of the Ghana law that's being put forward, it would be important to see whether the law actually says that rotation should occur X amount of times. So I think that the problem with rotation is that there's so much variability about what the laws say or don't say. So you might have the instance of a country that says you have to rotate every two years. Here's the first set. The law is very clear that every two years this needs to happen. If you're civil society and it's over the two year period and you haven't gotten a new set in, you have something to fight. 
I think it gets more complicated in countries where they may not establish an initial period from the start. So I think the first thing that anyone in any of these countries would need to do is look at what the law says. And so if the law does establish a specific period of time, then you have something to go to the government and say, you're not meeting your obligations. If the law doesn't set that out, you still have the FCTC guidelines, which say, you know, it shouldn't be more than 36 months. So if it's been more than three years, you could also argue, depending on the country and what its relation to the FCTC is and international law, that you're also in, in violation. I think the problem comes when it is through the ministerial resolutions. And then I think you have to go and target those specific offices and say, you know, the, the law has set this out. You are the ones in charge of, of passing a new resolution and, and try to pressure groups that may be more specific within the government. And that could actually be a, a positive thing that you have in terms of rotation, that it's very clear who the office is in charge of passing a new ministerial resolution. For other tobacco control measures, it's always a bit more broad, like the general government is the one that needs to pass a, a law or pass pass a, a new amendment or whatever to the, to the general tobacco control law. In the case of ministerial resolutions, it's simpler to pass them and there is a specific office that you can pressure. So I would say, go into the law, see exactly who the authority is in charge of passing new iterations, see what the law says in terms of how often rotations must be passed. And if neither of those things exist, then pressuring with the FCTC guidelines, which would set the three years as, as the max. I, I think that's a, a good answer. And I think it, it sort of helps. Uh, we did get feedback almost immediately sort of uh, in real time that it is it was two years so that has passed so i think you've given some some good advice that you can look to see what ministry was supposed to be doing that um i would probably approach the the ministry first to make sure they're aware that they were supposed to be doing that um and then yeah i think i think you have options after that um one of the other questions that came in was something related to another one that i've jotted down like uh, you did a great job in your limitations uh, slide to rule out a bunch of questions that I think are very interesting that this research might not be able to answer, but future research could. Um, so this is out of Brazil, basically saying, you know, what what sort of uh, next steps do you have if you think that a certain, I guess, company or brand is actually not uh, or maybe even the the sort of government itself um, not actually doing the the equal distribution of health warning labels. Um, I think more broadly, I did have uh, some questions about kind of yeah, where where does the uh, the burden lie for some of these things about like removing old uh, health warning rotations from you know is is this the retailer, the industry, the government, um, and yeah, so like who is kind of monitoring if we know. Uh, about like the equal distribution of health warning labels. I always was very intrigued. I mean, I think the industry does a lot of of sort of um, focus group research and they might try to use some health warning labels less than others if they can get away with it. Um, and maybe that's what what our colleague is alluding to saying that they only see or they they see five or six health warning labels more frequently than than the nine that they should. Um, so yeah, any any advice there? Uh, I mean, I think the the enforcement part of it is, is probably the most interesting part that came out of this research in terms of, well, it's not within the scope of this research, but it would be really interesting to look at. And I think you'd need to do huge sampling um, studies to, to be able to conclude whether they are being distributed equally and take that information to you know the government or, or the media I, I think it's definitely probably the case that there are some that are used more than others I think there's probably a lot of old packs in rotation way more than there should be during transition periods and I think and this is this is a hard question to answer because I think with tobacco control more broadly enforcement is so weak and I mean, Latin America has some of the best laws in the world around tobacco control, and yet on the ground we see that enforcement is very limited and there's oftentimes a lot of things that aren't being met. And so I think 
because the government is unlikely to necessarily strengthen this enforcement out of the blue, it, it'll be up to research and civil society to be able to bring this to the forefront. And I think seeing that packs are evenly distributed is hard because it would need to be a massive, massive sample to look at and both in, in retailers and, and just looking at large amount of packs. Obviously, if you were to do enforcement, you could say, we're going to a warehouse and you could look in the warehouse to see how different packs are being distributed. No tobacco company is going to do that voluntarily if, if researchers come in. I do think it would be easier to start with at least seeing that all the packs that are in circulation are packs that should be in circulation at the moment. I think that would probably be some of the most interesting research that could be done straight away just to get a sense of our transition periods being respected um, with the with the packs being evenly distributed that's a tough one yeah i agree i mean i think our colleague was sort of looking for whether there was a suggestion for a system and i know that health warning labels are a, a sort of a, a policy that tobacco control advocates like because it puts a a decent amount of the burden on the industry and not the government, right? They provide a set of health warning labels and the industry sort of has to apply those uh, appropriately. Um, like I imagine in some countries where there is a track and trace system, you might be able to incorporate what health warning label you're using in that tracking maybe, but beyond that, it is it is quite tough. Uh, I think I had a another question more broadly of like, how do you make this as seamless as possible? Like, can you get away from the, the ministerial resolutions? Like how much of the, the rotations can you sort of define in that initial uh, regulation? And, and is that necessarily a good thing either? Do you want some flexibility over time? Well, I think that's that's the biggest question. And, and I go back and forth between what I think is a better system. And so, you know, you look at, at the ones in, in the Caribbean, which have the two sets, which are rotating indefinitely. And, and on the one hand, that's quite easy, um, because then you just pass that initial law. And then you have the 16 that are rotating eight every year. But I think that also has two challenges. The first is that, again, if you're not necessarily fulfilling transition times, it means that you're going to end up with 16 warnings that people have seen for the last 10 years, and you might be getting them. I mean, initially, it's meant to be four months of the year. You can get both, but if, if you're not actually fulfilling the transition times, it, you may have all of them in rotation at once. So then you would just have 16 rotations, 16 pictures in rotation for however many years. And, and I think that would ruin kind of the message fatigue element. So in that sense, I get why it's important to pass new ones. I think also, as we saw with the COVID-19 ones in Mexico, I think also being able to keep updated with the research, see what harms, because obviously here we're just talking about rotation. We're not talking about what the actual health warning labels say. So we're also not looking at whether some of these might be more effective than others. But I could also see, for example, in the Caribbean, where you have an initial set of 16, you know, research might show two years down the line that out of those 16, four or five don't resonate with people at all, or, you know, they're not as effective and you might want to change those. So I think in an ideal world, you would be updating them every, you know, however, 12 months, 16 months, 18 months, however long you, you want to make it, and looking at research to say, which are the most effective warning labels? Why are they more effective? And how can we introduce you know, new populations, new things that may come up? I think the COVID one may be particularly effective um, at this point in time. So it is that mix of, well, what, what's, what's going to work. So I like Suriname's law, for example, that says if you don't pass a new law, we'll extend this for X amount of time. So it kind of sets that middle ground between both scenarios. Yeah, I was uh, I was going to put you in that tough position of picking a, a, a favorite amongst the group. I don't, I don't know if you want to create any enemies. Um, but yeah, I don't know if any of the countries really stuck out as a shining example for the the initial law or actually publicly giving the information or implementing uh or like those those sort of 
ministerial resolutions along the way. Did that, did any stick out to you as a good example in the region? Um, I don't think, I think again, the problem is here we're talking about rotation and isolation. And I like a lot of the, the countries in terms of their rotation schedules and methods, but then I look at their actual pictures and you know some of them might be terrible. So I think also we here we're just looking at rotation, but I think when we're considering rotation, we also have to think of it within the health warning label space more broadly. And you know, what are these new resolutions that you're passing? So I did, even though I think Mexico's is kind of completely schizophrenic in that it just has different times picture like it, it's just all over the place i did like that for their latest iteration they explain why they're setting out kind of the lung cancer the breast cancer the covid like clearly there was thinking behind why are these the ones that we have to rotate and i think seeing that intentionality in the new ministry resolution was something that was the first time, and, and this is something that came out after the research that I just looked at um, more recently. And it was the first time that I'd seen the resolution describe why it was incorporating four new warnings and, and why it thought it was important. And so I think that would also be something interesting to focus on rather than which schedule we're using or, or whether we're needing to pass new resolutions or not. Transparency is important. Um, so I, I see we're at time um, and I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, so I wanna thank you for sharing everything you did today and, and thank you for your work in tobacco control. And I wanna thank everyone uh, who joined us today. So everybody have a good rest of the day. Again, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I think I did that wrong, but yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining. Thanks so much, Kevin.